Well, I might be stating the obvious here, but when I was watching the film, I kept finding parallels to E.T. Sure. Uh, I saw the kind of, you know, mud building a boat, uh, similar to how E.T. would build a ship, and then there was the kind of, the connection between Ellis and Mud, and also there's a kind of, a, it looked like what was a nod to the kind of the famous bicycle scene. I was wondering if I was reading too much into this film, or if you were inspired by that movie. Um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of both. Um, I certainly didn't sit down and, and draw a map between E.T. and my film, um, although that's a fascinating, fascinating conclusion. But, you know, E.T. and Spielberg, they, they helped kind of shape who I was uh, growing up. You couldn't help it, you know. Um, you would go see a movie and you would go see a Spielberg movie, and, um, and they were great. And I think maybe I just absorbed it through my bloodstream, and, uh, and now it's coming back out. That being said, uh, you know, I remember even in production, we talked about this as kind of an Amblin film, you know? Um, when we were first shopping the film out, out of Cannes, um, I remember someone from Disney called, and I thought, that's so strange. It obviously didn't work out, um, possibly for the better, but I, I remember thinking, like, this feels like the kind of film Disney might really have released back in the 80s, you know? It's, it's, it's an adult film, um, but it, it has these um, child childlike elements to it. And, and that's what Spielberg did. He made serious films um but that were about kids and they felt like childhood and my childhood was shaped by those films so it's probably um not a coincidence that that there's some parallels although they weren't you know plotted because i mean at the core of this film this is a kind of a young boy getting his heart broken i suppose and i was just wondering you know if, if you were able to to draw back to your own sort of youth as when you were a teenager absolutely um you know each film i've made uh i try and and pick an emotion that's palpable something that um, was that I could immediately tap into at any stage of the process whether it's writing directing or editing I could close my eyes and imagine in my first film you know if one of my brothers was killed and uh, in my second film the anxiety and stress of, of starting a marriage and a family and the world falling apart and in this film I went backward and and I looked at you know what it was like in 10th grade to get my heart broken and it was painful I think as adults we we like to look down on on those years in our, our lives and say like, that's puppy love, you know, wasn't that cute. But the reality is, I think when you fall in love for the first time, um, it's maybe some of the most passionate feelings you'll have in your life. They aren't any more sincere, they're just more passionate, because you don't know any better. Your hands aren't up, you know. Um, and that felt like something worth making a movie about. And you mentioned that all three of your films that do have quite a personal angle to them. I was wondering if that's how you always kind of plan on, on working and writing, or do you think that one day you could sort of go out and do a kind of genre movie that's quite attached? I don't know. I feel like I've made a genre movie each time. Um, it's I, I, I love the idea of genre. I just love the idea of subverting genre more, you know? Genre is like a, a capsule um, that uh, allows you to take the medicine, <laughs> you know? Uh, it makes it go down easier. So. You know, with Mud, I was making a getaway film. It just happens um, in, in trying to subvert it, I stumbled backward into making a coming of age film. Um, you know, Take Shelter was a psychological thriller and Shotgun Stories was a revenge western. My next one's gonna be a sci-fi chase film. So I like the idea of genre. Now whether or not I, I take it on, you know, head on, um, uh, that I don't know yet. Because in this film, I thought that what was fascinating is this relationship between Ellis and Mud. And I was wondering if you could tell us about that and what is it about Mud that Ellis just kind of finds so endearing, I suppose. Well, yeah, you know, I think, um, I think for one thing, you know, this is a film about the cycle of, of first love, you know. And, and the, the cycle of that is you fall in love. It's, it's very passionate and, and sincere. And then you get your heart broken and it's very painful. But the flip side of that, the way to close that loop is, you know, after a while you, you feel better and you think, oh, I could do this again, you know. Um, and that's, that's the cycle of first love. The problem with Mud is he never closed that loop, you know. He, he never allowed his heart to get broken. So he's, he's been trapped in this, you know, state of first love. And so, of course, when Ellis meets him, that's what Ellis is looking for, someone to support what he's feeling, um, these ideas of first love. And, and Mud's the perfect, perfect guy for that. I mean, really, it was a narrative... It was a narrative idea that you could have these two characters um, kind of become the same person. You know, um, I actually had some things in the script that I removed because it just seemed too on the nose. You know, um, at some point, Ellis basically becoming Mud and Mud becoming Ellis. You know, um, they both need each other at this point in their lives. I thought the two performances from Ty Sheridan and Jake and Lof Jacob Loughlin were just outstanding. How did they both come to be involved? How did you sort of find them? Um, Ty came to me through uh, my producer, Sarah Green, who produced The Tree of Life. And Ty was the youngest boy in The Tree of Life, uh, the youngest brother. And she just kept saying, you need to meet Ty. He's about the right age, you need to meet him. And I walked in, this was before The Tree of Life even came out. 
and I just, he was the physical embodiment of the character I'd written, you know. Um, he looked like him, he behaved like him. Um, he was from East Texas, he had a beautiful natural accent. He knew how to drive a boat, you know, how to ride a dirt bike. It was like, you know, the universe delivered Ellis to me fully intact. And he'd just been on a Malick film, you know. So he'd uh, been through an experience I can't even imagine. Um, so that was just, I don't know, sometimes the right people show up at the right time and you just have to say thank you. Uh, Jacob, who plays Neckbone, you know, we just put an ad in the paper and, uh, and his mom saw it. Uh, it was an ad that just described Neckbone and his personality. I think we described him as a smartass, and his mother thought that sounded like him. <laughs> so, um, you know, similar situation, though. He, he's very similar to this character, and uh, it just speaks to their talent and their intelligence that they were able to, you know, not just be those characters in real life, but, but take my lines and kind of ingest them and give them back to us in an honest way. Adult actors have trouble with that. Just find it. I mean, you even managed to find a role, luckily, for Michael Shannon. Uh, so he's been in all three of your films. I was wondering if you, uh, if he's going to be in every film you ever made. Do you think that you can find a role from somewhere? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Um, if he'll keep, uh, if he'll keep showing up, you know, I'd written this part for him, um, and he was nice enough to do it. But I called him. You know, I said, "Look, Mike, these last two films we've done, I've had you attacked by dogs and birds and killed your family members. It's been tough. Why don't you just show up? We'll have a little bit of fun. You can put on a diving helmet." and uh, wear a wetsuit. And uh, he said yes. I think you should make a comedy one day. Ah, I can't wait. Have you seen the sorority letter he read? No, I haven't. Go find it. It's genius. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time yeah. today. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.